Jean-Michel Jarre Jean-Michel André Jarre is a French composer, performer and record producer. He is a pioneer in the electronic, ambient and new age genres, and known for organizing outdoor spectacles featuring his music, vast laser displays and fireworks. Jarre was raised in Lyon by his mother and grandparents and trained on the piano. From an early age, he was introduced to a variety of art forms, including street performers, jazz musicians and the artist Pierre Solage. He played guitar in a band, but his musical style was perhaps most heavily influenced by Pierre Schaeffer, a pioneer of musique concrete at the Groupe de Recherches Musicales. His first mainstream success was the 1976 album Oxygen. Recorded in a makeshift studio at his home, the album sold an estimated 12 million copies. Oxygen was followed in 1978 by Equinox, and in 1979, Jarre performed to a record-breaking audience of more than a million people at the Place de la Concorde, a record he has since broken three times. More albums were to follow, but his 1979 concert served as a blueprint for his future performances around the world. Several of his albums have been released to coincide with large-scale outdoor events, and he is now perhaps as well known as a performer as Hayes as a musician. As of 2004, Jarre had sold an estimated 80 million albums. He was the first Western musician officially invited to perform in the People's Republic of China and holds the world record for the largest ever audience at an outdoor event. Jean-Michel Jarre was born in Lyon on August 24, 1948, to France at Pajot a French resistance member and concentration camp survivor, and composer Maurice Jarre. When Jarre was five, his parents separated and his father moved to the United States, leaving him with his mother. He did not see his father again until reaching the age of 18. For the first eight years of his life, Jarre spent six months each year at his maternal grandparents' flat on the Cour de Verdun, in the Perrick district of Lyon. Jarre's grandfather was an oboe player, engineer and inventor designing an early audio mixer used at Radio Lion. He also gave Jean-Michel his first record player. From his vantage point high above the pavement, the young Jarre was able to observe street performers at work, an experience he later cited as proving influential on his art. Jarre struggled with classical piano studies, although he later changed teachers and worked on his scales. A more general interest in musical instruments was sparked by his discovery at the St. Wen Flea Market, where his mother sold antiques of a Boris V and trumpet violin. He often accompanied his mother to Le Chac Qui Pesh, a friend's Paris jazz club, where saxophonists Archie Shep and John Coltrane, and trumpet players Don Cherry and Chet Baker were regular performers. These early jazz experiences suggested to him that music may be descriptive, without lyrics. He was also influenced by the work of French artist Pierre Soulage, whose exhibition at the Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris he attended. Soulage paintings used multiple textured layers, and Jarre realized that for the first time in music, you could act as a painter with frequencies and sounds. He was also influenced by classical, modernist music. In a 2004 interview for The Guardian, he spoke of the effect that a performance of Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring had upon him. As a young man Jarre earned money by selling his paintings, exhibiting some of his works at the Lion Gallery, Loi Coute, and by playing in a band called Mystère 4. While he studied at the, his mother arranged for him to take lessons in harmony, counterpoint and fugue with Janine Roof of the Conservatoire de Paris. In 1967 he played guitar in a band called the Dustbins, who appear in the film. He mixed instruments including the electric guitar and the flute with tape effects and other sounds. More experimentation followed in 1968, when he began to use tape loops, radios and other electronic devices, but joining the group de Recherches Musicales in 1969, then under the direction of Pierre Schaeffer, proved hugely influential. Jarre was introduced to the Moog modular synthesizer and spent time working at the studio of influential German composer Karl Heinz Stockhausen in Cologne. In the kitchen of his flat on Rue de la Trommel, near the Champs Elysees, Jarre set up a small recording studio. It included his first synthesizer, an EMS VCS3, and an EMS Synthia AKS, each linked to Revox tape machines. For a 1969 exposition at the Maison de la Culture in Reims, Jarre wrote the five minute song Happiness is a Sad Song. His first commercial release was Lock H slash Eras Machine, a mixture of harmony, tape effects, and synthesizers in 1969. In 1971 Jarre was commissioned by choreographer Norbert Schmucke to perform a ballet called AOR, at the Palais Garnier. He also composed music for ballet, 
theater, advertisements and television programs, as well as music and lyrics for artists like Patrick Joubet and Christophe Dajar composed the soundtrack for Les Granges Brillé and in 1972 wrote music for the International Festival of Magic. That year he also released his first solo album, Deserted Palace, and from 1973-74 wrote music for Françoise Hardy and Gerard Lenormand, and wrote lyrics for Christophe and directed Christophe's Olympia show. Jar's 1976 low-budget solo album Oxygen, recorded at his home studio, made him famous internationally. It comprises of six numbered synthesizer tracks that make strong use of melody, rather than rhythm or dissonance. A Scully 8-track recorder was used to record instruments like the Eminent 310 and the Korg Mini Pops drum machine. Liberal use of echo was used on the various sound effects generated by the VCS-3 synthesizer. Jar's ARP 2600 synthesizer, previously used on his collaborations with Christoph, also featured, as did his EMS VCS-3. Oxygen initially proved difficult to sell. Jar was turned down by several record companies, until another of Schaefer's students, Ellen Dreyfus, persuaded her husband to publish the album on his label, Discomotors. The first pressing of 50,000 copies was promoted through hi-fi shops clubs and discos, and by April 1977 had sold 70,000 copies in France. When interviewed in Billboard magazine, Dreyfus's director Stanislas Vitold said, In a sense we're putting most of our bets on Jean-Michel Jarre. He is quite exceptional and we're sure that by 1980 he will be recognized worldwide. Oxygen has since sold an estimated 12 million copies, the best-selling French record of all time. It reached number two in the UK. It also contains his most recognizable single, Oxygen 4, which reached number 4 in the UK single charts. Jar's follow-up album, Equinox, was released in 1978. It was composed with sequencers, particularly on the bass, and features a more Baroque and classical style than Oxygen, with more emphasis on melodic development. Though its sales were still healthy, it had less of an impact than Oxygen, but the following year Jar held a large open-air concert on Bastille Day at the Place de la Concorde. The free outdoor event set a world record for the largest number of spectators ever at an open-air concert, drawing more than one million spectators. Although it was not the first time he had performed in concert, the 40-minute long event, which used projections of light, images and fireworks, served as a blueprint for Jarrah's future concerts. Its popularity helped create a surge in sales, a further 800,000 records were sold between 14 July and August 31, 1979, and introduced the Frenchman to Francis Rimbert, who worked for Jarre during two decades on a full-time basis. By the time Le Chance Magnétique was released on May 20, 1981, Oxygen and Equinox had achieved global sales of about 6 million units. In its first two months the new album sold a reported 200,000 units in France alone. The album uses sounds from the Fairlight CMI, a new instrument of which R was an early pioneer. Its digital technology allowed him to continue his earlier sonic experimentation in new ways. The album's release coincided with Jar's first foreign tour. In 1981 the British Embassy gave Radio Beijing copies of Oxygen and Equinox, which became the first pieces of foreign music to be played on Chinese national radio in decades. The Republic invited Jar to become the first Western musician to play there, with Lay Concert Sunshine. The performances were scheduled to run from 18 October to November 5, 1981. The first, in Beijing, was initially attended mostly by officials, but before the concert began, technicians realized that not enough power was available to supply the stage and auditorium. Chinese officials solved the problem by temporarily cutting power to the surrounding districts. The stadium was almost full when the concert began. But as Beijing's buses stopped running at about 10 o'clock, about half the audience left before it finished. To boost the audience attendance for the second night, Jar and his production team purchased some of the concert tickets and gave them to children on these streets. The event was notable for its lack of audience involvement, the Chinese were apparently unmoved by both the music and the light show, and applause was muted. At the second venue, Shanghai, Jar encouraged audience participation by stepping into the crowd, which became much more exuberant than that in Beijing. Recordings of the concerts, which featured one of Jar's signature electronic instruments, the laser harp, were released as a double disc club in 1982. Musique pour Supermarché was created for a planned performance at the Supermarché Art Exhibition. Jar allowed Radio Luxembourg to broadcast it uninterrupted, in its entirety 
before he auctioned off a single vinyl print on July 5, 1983, at the Hotel Truo in Paris. The sale raised about 70,000 francs, and in protest at the silly industrialization of music, Jarre promised to burn the original tapes in the presence of a bailiff. Parts of the destroyed album were reworked into works in subsequent releases. Both Music for Supermarkets and Zulok made heavy use of the Fairlight CMI's ability to sample audio. Zulok features snippets of words and speech from languages across the globe. Laurie Anderson provided the vocals for the track Diva. A long list of musicians, including Adrian Ballou and Marcus Miller, also made significant contributions. The album was somewhat less successful than Jarrah's previous works, reaching only number 47 in the UK album charts. In 1985, Jarre was invited by the musical director of the Houston Grand Opera to perform a concert celebrating Texas's 150th anniversary on April 5, 1986. Although he was busy with other projects and was at first unimpressed by the proposal, on a later visit to the city, he was immediately impressed by the visual grandeur of the city's skyline and agreed to perform. Also, 1985 marked the 25th anniversary of the foundation of the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center and NASA asked Jar to integrate the anniversary into the concert. Rendezvous was created over a period of about two months and, as with Zulook, contains elements of his album Musique pour Supermarché. Its three movements represent Houston's development, from a rural economy to its role as a leader in space technology. Baroque in style, the album uses a mixture of French horns, trombones and violins, and it features heavy use of the Elka synthex, notably so on second Rendezvous. A track Jar often performs using a laser harp. Jar worked with several Houston based astronauts, including Bruce McCandless II and Ronald McNair, an accomplished musician who was to have played the saxophone on Rendezvous Vie, recorded in the weightless environment of space. The live performance was curtailed by McNair's death in the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster on January 28, 1986. Consideration was given to the cancellation of the concert. But McCandless contacted Jar and urged him to proceed, in memory of the shuttle's crew. McNair's saxophone piece was recorded by French saxophonist Pierre Gosset and retitled Ron's piece. At Jar's giant concerts in Houston and Lyon, the part was performed by McNair's friend, American saxophonist Kirk Wallum. About 2,000 projectors shown images onto buildings and giant screens up to high transforming the city's skyscrapers into spectacular backdrops for an elaborate display of fireworks and lasers. Rendezvous Houston entered the Guinness Book of Records for its audience of over 1.5 million, beating his earlier record, set in 1979. The display was so impressive that a nearby freeway was blocked by passing vehicles, forcing the authorities to close it for the duration of the concert. Several months later he performed to an audience of about a million at his home city of Lyon, in celebration of a visit by Pope John Paul II. Watching from Lyon Cathedral, the Pope began the concert with a goodnight blessing, a recording of which appears on Cities in Concert Houston slash Lyon. In 1988 Jar released Revolutions. The album spans several genres, including symphonic industrial, Arabian-inspired, light guitar pop and ethnic electro-jazz. A two-hour concert called Destination Docklands was planned for September 1988, to be held at the Royal Victoria Dock in East London. Close to the heart of London, the location was chosen in part for its desolate environment, but also because Jar thought the architecture was ideally suited for his music. Early in 1988 Jar met with local officials and members of the community, but Newham Borough Council expressed their fears about the event's safety and delayed their decision on whether to allow the concert to proceed until 12 September eventually rejecting the license application. The local fire service were also concerned about access in the event of a fire. Site work continued as JAR's team searched for alternative locations in Wicto staged the concert, but following improvements to both on- and off-site safety JAR eventually won conditional approval on 28 September to stage two separate performances on the 8th and 9th of October. The floating stage on which R and his musicians performed was built on top of four large barges. Large purpose-built display screens were built, and one of the buildings to be used as a backdrop was painted white. One large mirror ball being transported to the event fell onto the roadside, causing a degree of confusion as some people mistook it for a fallen satellite. World War II searchlights were installed, to illuminate the sky and surrounding architecture. Along with thousands in the surrounding streets and parks, 200,000 people watched Jar and guests such as guitarist Hank Marvin perform in less than ideal conditions. Inclement weather had threatened to break the stage from its moorings, 
putting Pei to the original plan to float the stage across the Royal Victoria Dock. Wind speeds were so high that television cameras were blown over. On the second evening the audience, which included Diana, Princess of Wales, was soaked by rain and wind. In 1990 Jar released Ten Attendant Cousteau, inspired by the French oceanographer Jacques-Yves Cousteau. On Bastille Day 1990 he performed a concert at La Défense in Paris, attended by a record-breaking audience of about 2 million people, again beating his earlier world record. He later promoted a concert near the pyramids of Teotihuacan in Mexico, to be held during the solar eclipse of 11 July 1991. However, with only weeks to go, important equipment had not arrived in the sinking in the Atlantic Ocean of a cargo ship containing the purpose-built pyramidal stage and other technical equipment made staging the concert impossible. Jar's disappointment was such that he could not cope with Mexican food for two years. About two years later he released Chronology, an album influenced by the techno music scene. From a technical standpoint, the album is a reversion to a concept seen in Jar's Oxygen, Equinox period, where a grandiose overture precedes more rhythmic sections. The album features Jar's traditional collection of instruments like the ARP 2600 and Mini Moog, as well as newer synthesizers such as the Roland JD 800 and the Curse Wild K2000. Jar was invited to the inaugural celebrations of the Palace of the Lost City, a hotel located within the Sun City Resort in South Africa. Three concerts were held on December 1, 2, and 3, 1992. Each concert was attended by 15,000 people. 1819. Chronology was performed in a series of 16 performances across Europe called Europe in Concert. These were on a smaller scale than his previous concerts, featuring a miniature skyline laser imaging and fireworks. Locations included Lausanne Montana St. Michel, London, Manchester, Barcelona, Seville and the Versailles Palace near Paris. A concert was also held in Hong Kong in March 1994, to mark the opening of the city's new stadium. Jar performed many of his most well-known hits at the Concert for Tolerance on Bastille Day in 1995 celebrating the 50th anniversary of the United Nations. The Eiffel Tower was specially lit for the occasion, prompting the installation of a more permanent display. The following December, he created the website A Space for Tolerance, which featured music from an attendant Cousteau, played while the user browsed a variety of visual worlds. In 1997 Jar returned to the analog synthesizers of the 1970s with Oxygen 7-13, dedicated to his mentor at the GRM. Pierre Schaeffer, who had died two years before. Eschewing digital techniques developed in the 1980s, in an interview for the Daily Telegraph he said. In September that year he set his fourth record for the largest ever outdoor concert audience with a performance at the Moscow State University, celebrating the 850th anniversary of Moscow. The event was viewed by an audience of about 3.5 million. The funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales, had taken place on the same day and the Frenchman therefore dedicated Souvenir of China to her memory, before observing a minute's silence. Another large-scale concert followed on December 31, 1999, in the Egyptian desert near Giza. The Twelve Dreams of the Sun celebrated the new millennium and offered a preview of his next album, Metamorphose. The show featured performances from more than 1,000 local artists and musicians, and was based on ancient Egyptian mythology about the journey of the sun and its effect upon humanity. Jar released his first vocal album, Metamorphose, in 2000. It was mixed on an early version of Pro Tools, a digital audio workstation designed to record, edit and play back digital audio. Metamorphose marked a departure from Jar's earlier work. Sound effects used include radio interference from mobile phones, and Macintosh, a Macintosh program used to generate lyrics on the track Love, Love, Love. Contributors included Laurie Anderson, who had also appeared on Zulook. Natasha Atlas and Sharon Core. It was followed in 2001 by Interior Music, created for use by the audiovisual company Bang & Olufsen, and which did not receive a commercial release. The same year he composed, with Francis Rimbert arrangements, the music for the short-lived French channel Match TV, and contributed music to the soundtrack off the film Who Wants to Be a Star. In 2002 he released Sessions 2000 a set of experimental synth jazz pieces distinct from his previous work. Sessions was well received by Billboard magazine, which said he's created a deeply nuanced soundscape that invites repeated listening. A concert in September 2002 at a wind farm near Aalborg in Denmark proved problematic when 22 millimeters of rain fell on the venue, 
causing long delays for spectators. It also marked a change in direction in Jar's live concerts, from Rendezvous Houston onwards he had been accompanied by a full complement of live musicians, but at Alborg he was accompanied only by Francis Rimbert, and having guests like the Claret Girls Choir, Safri Duo and the Alborg Symphonic Orchestra. In 2003 he released Geometry of Love, commissioned by Jean Rock as a soundtrack for his VIP room nightclub in France. It contains a mix of electro-chill music, with touches of his more traditional style. In October 2004 he returned to China to open its year of France Cultural Exchange. Jar gave two performances, the first at the Meridian Gate of the Forbidden City, and the second in Tiananmen Square. More than 15,000 spectators watched the concert at the Meridian Gate, and each concert was transmitted nationwide on live television. Jar collaborated with musician Chen Lin. Accompanying his traditional musical repertoire, 600 projectors shone colored light and images across various screens and objects. In September 2004, Jar released Arrow, both a DVD and a CD in one package. Purportedly the world's first album released for 5.1 systems, with it being fully constructed in 5.1 surround sound, it contains re-recorded versions of some of his most famous tracks, including tracks from Oxygen and Equinox. Accompanying the audio, the DVD features a visual image of Aunt Pari Lo's eyes, recorded in real time as she listened to the album. Jar used the minimalist imagery to reinforce the audio content of the DVD. The CD was mixed in super stereo. In his role of UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Jar performed a concert named Water for Life in Morocco, on December 16, 2006, to celebrate the United Nations Year of Desertification in the World. The performance was in front of the Erg Chevy Dunes of Mertsuga, in the Sahara. A free event, it was attended by about 25,000 people. Images of water and the environment were projected onto nine vertical screens, held in place by sand which was water to keep it hard. Several permanent drinking fountains were built on the site, along with a permanent electricity installation. Jar was accompanied by over 60 Moroccan artists. Jar released Teo and Teo on March 26, 2007. He described the two computer-generated characters in the video clip of the title track as being like twins, one female, one male. The album is supposed to describe the different stages of a loving relationship, and explores the idea that the length of such relationships is unpredictable. Its release demonstrated a move away from virtual instruments and computers that Jar had been using up to that point, he instead chose to use a simplified range of devices, including several new prototype instruments. The album's cover was inspired by the David Lynch film Wild at Heart. In August 2007 Jar signed for Emmy France. He released an anniversary package containing a special live recording of his classic work, Oxygen, in 3D DVD, live CD in normal 2D DVD formats in November 2007, named A First for Jar. The album was recorded live, without tape or hard disc playback, with help from Francis Rimbert, Claude Samard, and Dominique Perrier. The album also contains three extra tracks not found on either the original or remake, which form links between the main movements. Jar plans to integrate the original analog synthesizers from Oxygen into his next album, and is building a new private recording studio on the outskirts of Paris. In the same year Disque Dreyfus released the complete Oxygen, containing the original versions of Oxygen and Oxygen 7-13, and remixes of tracks from Oxygen 7-13. Jar performed 10 concerts in Paris, from 12 December 26, 2007, held in the Théâtre Marigny a small 1,000-seat theater in the Champs-Élysées. Later in 2008 Jar performed several concerts to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Oxygen, in theaters in Europe. Following one such performance at the Royal Albert Hall Jar met Brian May, who proposed he create a concert in Tenerife for the International Year of Astronomy, but a lack of sponsorship meant that the concert did not take place. In 2009 he was selected as the artistic director of the World Sky Race and also accepted a role as Goodwill Ambassador for the International Year of Astronomy. In 2009 he started an indoor tour in arenas throughout Europe. On March 1, 2010, Jean-Michel Jarre started the second leg of his 2009-10 indoors tour. On 10 June, he was presented with a Lifetime Achievement Award by Mojo Magazine. On May 30, 2011, Essentials and Rarities, a double CD set, was released. This was the last Jar work to be released by Disca Dreyfus. The Essentials disc is a compilation of some of his most famous works. 
The Rarities disc includes pieces recorded in the years prior to the release of Oxygen. After this release, Jarre recovered sole intellectual property rights over his work, which had previously been owned by Francis Dreyfus Music. On July 1, 2011, Jarre performed a large-scale concert in Monaco to celebrate the marriage of Prince Albert and his bride Charlene. During the last quarter of 2011 he concluded a tour schedule that had lasted for almost three years. He used the same format for a later concert at Carthage during the city's 2013 musical festival. In June 2013, Jarre was elected as president of the Confederation Internationale des Sociétés d'Auteurs et Compositeurs. In spring 2015, Jarre released the first music from a new studio album, released in October 2015, following around four years of work. The album comprises a number of collaborations with other artists. The first of these to be released was the collaboration with Gesoffelstein entitled Conquistador, followed by Glory, with M83. The track was also featured as part of the soundtrack of a short film entitled Demic. Other collaborations on the album include Zero Gravity, with the late Edgar Frost and Tangerine Dream, Vince Clark for Automatic, Armin Van Buren for Stardust, John Carpenter for A Question of Blood, Little Boots for If, and Pete Townsend for Travelator, Part 2. The album became Jar's first album in over 25 years to make the UK top 10 at number 8. In December 2016, the album was nominated for the Grammy's 2017 Awards in the Best Dance Slash Electronic Album category. In 2016, was released with 15 more collaborators, including Pet Shop Boys, Hans Zimmer, Yellow, and Gary Newman. One track includes Speech by Edward Snowden. Electronica 2 has been nominated in the album de musique électronique dance category 4th Grammy 2017 in USA and Victoire de la Musique 2017 awards in France. On April 11, 2016, it was revealed that Jar worked in collaboration with British virtual band Gorillaz on their fifth studio album Humans. He also composed during 2016 the soundtrack for the French news network France Info. This soundtrack, in an orchestrated arrangement, will be released as Radio Finney Volume 9 on January 13, 2017. On September 30, 2016, Jar himself announced on Facebook a new album, called Oxygen 3, released on December 2, 2016, the 40th anniversary of Oxygen. In 2017, he performed a concert near the Fortress of Masada, for the purpose of saving the Dead Sea. He also performed a special concert for the opening of Año Jubilar at the Monasterio de Santo Toribio de Libana, in Spain. Both concerts were heavily based in the Electronica Tour concept. During May 2017, Jar toured in Canada and USA for the first time in his career, and in July 2017 another leg of the tour was held in Europe. During 2017, Jar composed the musical dressing for France Info. This composition was later orchestrated and released as Radiophonie Volume 9. In March 2018, Jarre performed in South America for the first time as part of his electronic tour in Buenos Aires and Santiago de Chile. These concerts were originally scheduled for November 2017, but problems with the production company caused the rescheduling. The 2018 leg of the tour continued in Canada and the United States during April including the presentation of the Electronica show with a reduced track list in the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. In September 2018, a studio compilation album entitled Planet Char, 50 Years of Music, consisting of 41 songs and four quite different styles of composition, was released. Jar released his new studio album Equinox Infinity in November 2018. Jar is fluent in French and English and has been married three times. He was married to Flor Giard from January 20, 1975 until 1977. Their daughter Amy Lee Charlotte was born in 1975 or 1976 and became a fashion model. He met his second wife Charlotte Rampling at a dinner party in Saint Tropez in 1976. Both were in failing marriages, and they each obtained a divorce. The two married, Jar gaining custody of his daughter Amy Lee Charlotte, and Rampling her son Barnaby. Together they have a son, David. Jar and Rampling separated in 1996 and divorced in 2002. He had a brief relationship with Isabella Johnny, and married French actress Anne Parry Lowe in May 2005. In November 2010 the couple announced their divorce. Jar has a half-sister Stéphanie Jar, from Maurice Jar's other marriages. His stepbrother, Kevin Jar, died in 2011. Although Maurice and Jean-Michel remained estranged, following Maurice's death in 2009, 
Jar paid tribute to his legacy. Jar said about his father My father and I never really achieved a real relationship. We probably saw each other 20 or 25 times in our lifetime. When you are able, at my age, to count the times you have seen your father, it says something. I think it's better to have conflict, or, if you have a parent who dies, you grieve, but the feeling of absence is very difficult to fill, and it took me a while to absorb that. On October 5, 2016, Jar was announced to be part of the advisory panel of the political party Democracy in Europe Movement 2025. An asteroid, 4422 Jar, has been named in his honor. He is an honorary citizen of Gdansk. As of 2004, Jar had sold an estimated 80 million albums. Jar composed for movies and also participated in documentaries. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.